CNBC TV 18, embarking on a quarter century of excellence. Welcome back. You are watching News Center. Now, shipping firms remain divided on returning to the Red Seas as Houthi rebels continue their attacks. While shipping majors like Musk have said that they are resuming uh, using the Red Sea route, others like Evergreen Group and the MSC continue to steer clear of the Red Sea and reroute vessels via the Cape of Good Hope. Suppliers, meanwhile, are looking to reroute cargo away from the Suez Canal. Experts warn that rerouting of ships from India to Europe and Middle East through the Cape of Good Hope could increase the shipping costs by as much as 80%. Uh, to further discuss the economic impact of this crisis, we are now joined by Vitaliano Tobruk, the industry practice lead at Moody's Analytics. Uh, Mr. Tobruk, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, give us a sense of the situation of status quo as of right now. The likes of Musk are contemplating a return to Red Sea. There's no firm roadmap uh, on the way yet. And at the same time, we've seen stabilization of oil prices. Uh, how is the situation panning out on ground zero as we speak? So I think that the disruption in the Red Sea uh, due to this uh, ongoing conflict are indeed causing uh, a, a global uh, a, a fallout in global supply chain, especially if we talk about a uh, uh, near term. Major, major companies have already suspended the operation through the Suez Canal and they rerouted their vessels. And we know that uh, this is a critical maritime link be for, for global trade. And this uh, uh, rerouting uh, is leading to uh, a longer transit time, a significant uh, uh, that can uh, cause the delay in delivery deliveries of goods. Purchasing uh, and logistic managers are facing uncertainty regarding uh, uh, the timing of deliveries. So this can cause additional significant challenges in managing inventory and especially meet customer uh, expectation. And consider that even if ships reach their destination ports, now they may encounter capacity constraints that prevent quick offloading and also turnaround. So the combination of uh, delays, increasing cost, uncertainty, and port congestions can cause significant uh, disruption in the global supply chain, especially for industries that rely also in uh, uh, just-in-time strategy and have a global complex supply chain. So they, they, this could be particularly affected by this situation. I think that businesses and also policymakers need to closely monitor the situation and may need to adjust their strategies to mitigate those impacts. Sure. Let me then ask you a question as far as uh, the shipping freight rates are concerned. We're talking about freight rates going by as much as 80%. How much of a concern is that when we're talking about a global supply chain, ships going around the Cape of Good Hope in Africa, how much, what does that translate into numbers as far as freight rates are concerned? So let's say that, uh, uh, of course, this, uh, this, uh, this create, uh, this uh, impacted also the cost of uh, uh, shipping uh, uh, companies because uh, we need to add uh, that there are about 10 days to these journeys, and there is increasing uh, operational cost due to fuel, higher fuel consumption. And in addition, we need to consider that also the suspension, the suspension affects over 50% of the weekly container shipping capacity on the Far East route, reducing also availability, available capacity and potentially supporting the freight rates. So this is, uh, this is a really important, uh, that this is the reason why these are impacting the, also the freight rates that is driver up and could lead the more favorable contract uh, and supporting the freight rates. And while the conflict is leading to increased operational costs that could drive up freight rates, other factors such as uh, reduced uh, available capacity, annual contract negotiation, and also the timing of new shipping capacity coming online could also support freight rates in the current situation. Let me ask you a question about the way forward. The U.S. is keen on deploying a defensive perimeter around this entire region. A 20-nation coalition is trying to be woven together by President Biden. But... There is some hesitancy being expressed by European players such as the likes of Italy, the likes of Spain, not quite committed to this 20-nation combine. 
uh, for protecting and for shielding the Red Sea. Is there confidence in the ability of the Western nations to mount a defensive deployment in the region? What we can see is that uh, uh, after this, uh, after the, the, um, this, this military coalition, we have seen that Musk has decided also to resume the shipping to the uh, Suez Canal. Of course, uh, this can, uh, uh, let's say, this can be a catalyst for other companies to follow this suite. And the operational, uh, it's, uh, it's aimed also to protect commercial vessel and is, re re is designed to restore confidence in the, in the safety of uh, these critical uh, trade routes. But in the, on the other end, we need to be careful because uh, also Musk announced that the resume operation could be seen as uh, an encouraging sign for other companies but they also say that they will still choose to uh, they, they it's important that uh, uh, companies have made clear that overall risk is in there is not being entirely eliminated and it will not hesitate to re-evaluate re the right. situation initiate diversion plans again if it necessary so the situation it seems that is going well yes. but we need to monitor we need to monitor the how the uh, events evolves Right, Mr. Tobul, thank you so much for taking our time and speaking to us and giving us more clarity on the way forward. Uh, but let's move ahead.